you know, sometimes we do like absurd things. Like what if you changed, you know, getting awareness, where is that voice coming from, right? Does it seem like it's coming to one side or the other? Is it your own voice? Or sometimes it's almost like a parent's voice, right? That's going to bring in more awareness. Well, what if you change that voice? And when you heard it, it sounded like a cartoon character, right? <laughs> sometimes it, it's, it's that simple. And then it, it changes yeah. the, me- the meaning and, and that you, you, it's a different kinesthetic response. All right, you guys, welcome to another episode of A Safe Place to Land. I'm Olivia Peltz, and today I have a delightful guest, Brian Holbach. Welcome, Brian. Hey, happy to be here. Yes, round two or three, I think, for you to be back on the show, which is fantastic. Okay, so let's just get right into it. We are going to be talking about a type of coaching modality that you utilize when working with folks called NLP. So high level view, what is that? Yeah. So NLP, which is short for Neuro Linguistic Programming, you know, it's the stru- it's the study of the structure of the subjective experience in a nutshell. And it's also, you know, it's a, a number of things. It's also models for success, right? Models for successfully getting an outcome, whatever outcome that is. Um, and so at the heart of it, you're looking at when I'm working with clients, it's, it, there's a presupposition that they're not, you know, interacting with the real, the physical reality of whatever issue they're facing, it's interacting with their internal map. So working in their inner world with the pro- with whatever their problem state is, and and helping them move from their problems present state to their future desired state. It's kind of what happens right. in coaching. And interesting. Yeah, yeah, and and looking at a lot of the stuff with NLP, it's the difference between working with the content of what they present and looking at the structure below that. So not necessarily looking at what they're thinking, but how they're thinking it. So like the narratives that they're telling themselves, like internally, like in their mind kind of thing? Yeah. So that's going to be the content and what I'm looking for. So all of us, you know, as, as humans, right, we all delete, distort and generalize. And it's not necessarily a good or bad thing. It's, it's like we do it. So it's looking mm-hmm. at how we do it. So okay. when, when someone has a narrative, right, and a, a story of what they're si- saying, the first thing that I do is I'm, I'm listening with a tuned up ear to how those language patterns are showing where they're bumping up against limitations in their internal map of reality, their internal representations. You know, if I hear a sentence structure that's a cause effect sentence structure, like because of, you know, that shows me that there, it's, it's often like a belief statement or a generalization, right? And so then mm-hmm. I start thinking, how was that generalization formed? Got it. And going back to what kind of fueled that. Right, exactly. And, and doing it from a point, you know, in NLP, it's called eliciting things. So you're, yeah. you know, again, through that delete, distort and generalize, those are coming in from your senses. So in NLP, you generally work with visual, auditory, and kinesthetic, right? Yep. And there's the ex- internal and external. So mostly working on internals, you know, on the, those internal states uh, and eliciting, like really kind of like squeezing out like that extra information that might be mm-hmm. missing or not, it's not there consciously. It's almost like extending those internal senses to bring in more awareness. Huh. So this, so it's interesting. So it makes me think of like with therapists, you know, we have different modalities or ways in which that we would work with a client, whether that's through cognitive behavioral therapy or EMDR for trauma, those types of things. And this is similar to that in the sense of it's a way in which that you orient yourself to the client and the client's symptoms or problems of why they're coming in to help them work there, as you said, to achieve the outcome, whatever that might be on the other side. Right, right. And and there's a lot of different methodologies. Right. And and you'll see it some overlap because NLP borrows from psychology. It uses linguistics, it uses neurology, also hypnosis and, and other fields. So it's kind of like it's that study of of 
us finding successful models to, you know, get from where you are to where you want to be. And, you know, I, I also teach and I train new coaches and train new, new NLP practitioners. And one of the most common questions I get is like, how do you know when to use which technique? You know, is it right. situa situational or not? It's, it doesn't really have to do with the, the situation and the context. But again, looking at that structure and what I call following the client through their map, right? You're, you're listing that information, not just to know as a coach, but it's also to bring their own awareness. Like maybe that's not fully conscious as far as the, the scope of how, how the client sees it. So as they kind of consciously and verbally put out this, you know, their, their internal representations of whatever they're facing, new things come in. So the more you involve the client in that process and the more you just kind of follow them through versus, you know, doing a technique as written, right. the, high, the higher, the higher the success. And I, I don't know if there's, there may be parallels in, in, the, in other yeah. fields too. What kind of separates a decent coach or a decent therapist between that and a fantastic or great therapist or a great coach? I think is less about the skill in terms of like when to deploy or when to utilize certain techniques or strategies or what have you, and more to do around the intuition and the ability of the clinician or the coach to move towards the client and to meet them where they're at and to go with kind of their gut, which is very much kind of like that embodied sense of the practitioner. Right. Def definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's kind of at the heart of NLP is like, as a coach, like I put my, I, I, I try to get a clear enough picture where I can put myself, where I can see their internal map, where I can see, mm -hmm. you know, not just the situation, but where there's beliefs that are holding them back. They're thinking whenever they think of their goal, they just get sucked into the past. And so sometimes it, it's like timeline type things where, it, where it's just awareness of how you process time and if you're focused on the past, present, or future, there, there's there's multiple multiple ways to get there. But most importantly, finding a way that the client can connect to and relate. To. Yeah, right. I think it's helpful too for folks to hear this because I think there's a lot of misnomers around what does it mean to be a life coach? What does it mean to be a mental health coach? And there's a lot of folks that are like, oh, anyone can be a coach. Which, like, sure, yes, I suppose, right? But again, like. What separates someone who is, you know, I was, you know, I, whatever you want to say, like I was working in the corporate field for 20 years and now I'm a coach and I do whatever, 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 versus you going through actual training in a pretty intensive like certification program to be able to work with folks specifically around their mental health and not just like the, you know, the overgeneralization of like the coaching realm of like being woo woo or, or whatever, but it's like, no, like this is legitimate. Like we're doing like, it's more structured and less of the sure, whatever you want to do, we'll just talk about life and see what happens. So talk to me a little bit about like what the structure, like when someone works with you again, like overgeneralizations, because it's going to be specific, right. To, to the individuals, but specific, like generally speaking, what does it look like when folks come into care with working with you? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good question. So from my point of view, what, what does it look like, right? So that's, that's really yeah. you know, what I can share the most. Right, um, exactly. So here's here's one of the things that I learned and I also convey to students is like to be a, a great coach. There's a few things. It's like, I see not only the, all the clients as like a work in progress, but also myself, right? So coaching is a partnership. And having that overall kind of metaphor of like, you know, I'm a work in progress and I'm kind of here to kind of de deliver the gifts that I have. So it, it kind of starts with that as well as, you know, a certain level of, you know, self-care and, and mindset work and prepping myself yeah. for sessions as well is important. It almost makes it easier because it's like, it's part of my job. <laughs> it's part of my job to be in like a right. prime, sta prime state. So it's like, it becomes a must, right? Yeah. It's not, it's yeah. not optional. So, you know, I have a, a, like kind of a brief routine I go through 
to make sure that I'm, I'm in a prime state before I start coaching or if I'm teaching. And that, that kind of involves some, some other things, some mindset work, some breath work, things like that. Then once we sit down, I really see it as that we're on a journey. We're a work in progress. And the other things of coaching is, is like the soft skills are, are your know, presence, like being able to just be there present with someone and yeah. in a non-judgmental way. It's like to be sitting, working with the coach that, you know, you have a person that's has only your best interest in mind. I, I can have no other objectives yeah. and it's completely confidential. And it's amazing just in that context of just having someone present and being able to, you know, kind of help you elicit and, and pull those things out that are already there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not advice giving. It's not like, this is how I think you should, your life should be. Yeah. You know, you're, you're the authority on you and don't let anyone tell you any different. It's it, right. that, that kind of thing. So, so I'm not about looking at changing. I'm not as interested in, in what you're thinking and it's really working on, you know, after working with me, it changes the way you think. You know, how do you think digging into a heightened awareness of, okay, you know, it just seems like thoughts and things like things seems like, you know, this happens and I feel this way and it's like an automatic pattern, right? Being able to break that down, slow it down, be aware of those sub modalities of visual, auditory, kinesthetic pieces and seeing, okay, well, this pattern was created and figure out why and figure out sometimes it's as simple as adding in a different visual piece almost like it's little strips in a film you know right. you add in a, a visual piece or you add in an internal auditory or you change the self-talk right uh it's a, that's common one self-talk whether it's you know positive or negative yeah, like self, 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 yeah. self-critic and again yeah. it depends on on how that was formed and how the context of the problem mm. but it can be as simple as you know sometimes we do like absurd things like what if you changed you know getting awareness, where is that voice coming from, right? If, if, if it's, in, it, does it seem like it's coming to one side or the other? Is it your own voice? Or sometimes it's almost like a parent's voice, right? And, and right. that's going to bring in more awareness. Well, what if you change that voice? And when you heard it, it sounded like a cartoon character, right? <laughs> sometimes it, it's, it's that simple. And then it changes yeah. the, me- the meaning and, and that you, it's a different kinesthetic response. And then there, there's other deeper methodologies as well but sometimes it's just changing an image changing a quality of the auditory being you know too associated into a problem and being able to take a step back and almost see it from an outside perspective and learn more if you are picking up what we're putting down we would love it if you could drop us a review wherever you're listening and subscribe it helps other folks find us and helps us spread the word that it is okay to not be okay. All right, enough about this. Let's get back to the show. Yeah. So I think when you use the word kinesthetic, you're really, what I'm also hearing is like being in your body, not just like utilizing your body, though that's helpful too, but like how things, how your thoughts or how, when you say a certain phrase or how, when you, you know, present something, what, how is it affecting my personhood, my bodily kind of response? Is that True. Yeah. So there's, there's a tool in NLP called the 12 states of attention. So again, we okay. kind of work mainly work with the three visual auditory kinesthetic. And so yeah. you get from those three to 12, you have both internal, external, broad, and narrow. So those mm-hmm. are kind of like, you have 12 different options. So if someone says I'm stuck and I really feel, you know, lost, right. Even by their language mm-hmm. that, yeah, as a practitioner, okay, that's a that's a kinesthetic internal feeling that they're very associated in, right? Yeah. And so, at a very basic level, again, it, you kind of, I kind of, at this point in my career, all these things kind of mash together. You know, I've got yeah, you know, totally. a bunch of good, different tools, but at a very simple level, sometimes just moving someone through to a different state of attention. Again, if if okay. you if you shift from that to external visual and you look at something on the wall that that feeling it diminishes sometimes right Mm -hmm. and sometimes something else comes in so if or if you shift from kinesthetic internal to okay well 
if there's a visual representation of that and you sh- switch to visual and you get this broad picture and then narrow it down, all these images are visual representations that have meaning, right? So you can, someone's stuck getting some movement through the submodalities in some yeah. form or fashion can generally bring out new insights and, and create that solution. Okay, so that's one of the tools that you like to use. What are, again, like overgeneralizations, right? But like, what are some other tools that even like people who are listening might be able to, you know, whether utilize or to at least explore further? Let's say, yeah, I think feeling stuck is a really big one for folks. One that I see a lot is people not really knowing, like they'll know cognitively what they're feeling or thinking, but they struggle to like actually be able to name the emotion that usually is within their bodies, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think of first steps and and it's, it's kind of similar to when I start working with someone is just building that awareness. So if there's feelings they can't put names to, just kind of being present with those feelings and not worrying about the intellectually labeling them. And yeah. it's like, hang out with that feeling, see what it does, right? Is there movement with mm-hmm. it? Like if, if you were to, you know, sometimes it's it in these types of situations, it's like, there's a feeling and you're resisting it, right? <laughs> and, and it's like, well, right. well, and again, you know, I don't know the exact context. So there are right. eco- ecology concerns depending on where, what type of, uh, what exactly you're experiencing, but if you were to just stop resisting, what happens, right? You know, sometimes if you sit with that feeling and almost like ask your mind, if using your mind as an interactive tool, is there an image? With it? If you felt sometimes filling in the other missing submodalities to bring in more information, kind of like just like a beginner's mind and 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 this idea that you know a lot of times you're stuck because there's missing information right? And a well-defined problem yeah. can seek its own solution. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So just working with like, like the, the awareness piece, I think is, you know, if you have thoughts, understanding the structure of the thoughts, right? Are you mm-hmm. more kinesthetic? Are you more visual? Are you more auditory? Yeah. And practicing moving through those. And I'd say the other one is getting an awareness of how you perceive time. So in the NLP, it's called timeline. You know, when you think of something in your past versus your future, in your internal world, those usually have different locations, right? right? And just like if you could imagine the internal world mirrors the external world in a certain way, if you didn't know the location of things in the external world, you'd be kind of disoriented, right? So, so understanding, okay, 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 right? So in your internal world, same thing. If it's just kind of all these thoughts and and yeah. things are, are mashed up so you know it's co- it's very common some people like they perceive things from their past on their the left hand side of their internal world and the future towards the right some of their their past is behind them and e- even uh, huh. th- through language you can kind of tell some of these things the future there's yeah. a bright future ahead right and and so some goes you know kind of that way so getting some awareness of that and and there's a a lot of things there sometimes you can realize how you know you're perceiving your life like a common thing that happens about you know 50 percent of the time when i ask clients like okay imagine you're guaranteed to succeed in the thing they're going after what does that look like and they start talking Mm -hmm. about their past and why they can't right Right. It's, it's an immediate thing so it's almost like their present isn't just the present moment, but it could be the last six months or the last six years. And, right. and that's, that's what they're experiencing as they, they've kind of generalized that whole time as their present. So I'm understanding where you are on that timeline and, and where sense. you're focused. Yeah, that makes sense. That's helpful. What, um, I mean, obviously you work with a, a variety of folks, but what are some of your favorite struggles, problems, issues, however we want to define it, obstacles, you know, that people come in with that you have seen pretty significant change and transformation with? Yeah, well, I mostly work with with entrepreneurs. So there's something about the 
maybe there's something about the entrepreneurial mind <laughs> that, that connects well with NLP. We have a, we have a specific brain, that's for sure. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I think I think I think there's a uh, you know special wiring in that. Yeah. So sometimes you know certain characteristics of like unrealistically optimistic things uh-huh. like that. <laughs> you know. Um, yep. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, there's not so much like, I think it depends on, you know, kind of like you mentioned, like there's all these different kinds of therapies and EMDR and dramatic healing and all all these things. And I think it all has to do with how it can connect with the client's internal map. And there's not a a hard metric that I've found that really tells that, like which specific approach will work for them. Right. It's like there's people who've gone to coaching and it doesn't work and they go to mm-hmm. therapy and it does work and vice right, versa. And vice right? versa. Right. Yeah. And, it, and like I've had people come to me like, oh, I've tried to get past this issue in therapy for five years and now we just did it right now. And it, it doesn't mean mm. that that therapist doesn't know what they're doing or it just means it's yeah. a different. They just needed a different approach. And I, I yeah. haven't really found anything past that to describe that that kind of phenomenon. Yeah, well, I would imagine to your point, it's equal parts the approach and also probably the person of the clinician too. Because sometimes, like, you could have fantastic feelings towards your therapist, work coach, whomever, and feel very aligned with them. And they might just not be the best fit for that thing that you're trying to work through or to navigate or whatever it might be. You know, like I, I definitely have had that where I've got a couple of clients that love working with me. We've done great work. And when it comes to certain issues, I recognize, I'm like, I don't think I'm the best fit for this. They're like, no, yes, you are. And I'm like, wow, I know that you like, I love working with you and vice versa, but also like, it might be time for you to go seek an alternative therapy approach or coaching or whatever it might be. Not to say that like you said, I suck, but there's, we all have limitations into where we can take people and the different approaches that we have. And I think when we can open ourselves up to, there's so much more than just coaching or therapy or traditional talk therapy or whatever. There's so many different varieties of therapies that people can utilize that sometimes are just a better fit for getting to where they need to get to or working through that specific issue. Right, right. If you think of it as like they're all different models, right? It's like which models can you relate to, and which model really fits in and connect can connect with what you you're experiencing. Totally. Well, this has been really helpful, and maybe we'll have to do like a little part two at some point. But yeah, I know it was helpful for me. Like I self was close to you before we started. I'm like, I don't really know much about NLP. But it sounds very similar to kind of the way in which that I work, which is just really funny because I've been told that I have more of a coaching style than a clinical therapy style. And and hearing how you kind of talk and what NLP kind of is, I'm like, yeah, it's similar to how I work in a lot of ways, which is funny. So that's kind of cool. What kinds of offerings, how can people work with you? What's the best way for them to one, get in touch with you, but also two, to know what you offer? Yeah. So best way is just schedule a free strategy session. Yeah. In that session, you pretty much figure out if we're a good fit together. Pretty much if you have something that you want to change about your life or yourself. I mean, that's a very broad scope, but uh, yeah, know, my skills, I could, I apply them within that field. But yeah, I mean, I, I work mostly with entrepreneurs. I have some people that come up to me like, hey, I, I listen to your stuff. I've heard your messaging. That seems like it relates to me as well. I'm not an entrepreneur. Will you work with me? Of course, right? If, if this resonates with you, um, sure. then then the, the skill set kind of maps across a lot of different areas. Cool. No, that's awesome. That's very cool. Yeah, I know. I I have a specific niche too. And so people are like, I'm not that, I'm not in that niche, but like, can you help me? I'm like, probably. <laughs> this is just like, what I'm really good at and the specific like zone of genius kind of thing. And similar to you, it's like you specialize in working with entrepreneurs. That doesn't mean that you can't work with someone who's in corporate America or a stay at home mom or someone who's retired or what have you. It just means that you have a hyper fixation on that specific group of people and you're really good at speaking to them and helping them navigate through, you know, our wild little brains that we have. So that's awesome. Any last things that would be helpful for folks to know about coaching? 
before we get out of here? Hmm. Yeah. Very I mean, broad I, question, I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, first thing that comes to mind is, it, you know, it just think it's like you're going along in your life and, you know, you can kind of continue doing what you're doing and, and likely get the results that you've been getting and, and that might be fine. But if you want different results, it is, you know, increases your chances of success and, and change by working with someone. E- even a lot of the NLP techniques that were formed, they're designed to use on yourself. You kind of need that outside perspective yeah. in order to go f- fully into it. So, yeah, I mean, that that's kind of it. And if you, you yeah, know, when you're hiring a coach, just, you know, feeling comfortable that they can get you there. And that you have that connection is the number one factor for success is feeling like you're a good match. Awesome. Well, thanks for hopping on with me, Brian. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thanks so much. Perfect. All right. See you guys. Bye. Thanks so much for spending some time with us here on a safe place to land. Could you do me a favor really quick? Could you leave us a review wherever you are listening to this and subscribe? so that you never have to miss an episode whenever we drop it. If at any point in time you're like, man, it would be so cool to work with the team at Sunshine City Counseling, you can always find us at sunshinecitycounseling.com. We serve the state of Florida, and we are located in the downtown community of St. Petersburg, Florida. If you are in or around the Portland, Maine area, you can find us at easternshorecounseling.com. Oh, we really believe that every single person is deserving of excellent mental health care. You are not a problem to be solved or fixed. You are a person to be served. We are here for you. So don't hesitate to reach out. Until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye.